Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today's video is the first in a series of videos that I'll be posting over the next few weeks that I'm calling DJI Mini 2 Basics. And these videos will focus on the Mini 2 and I'll cover different tutorials and topics and technologies that make this drone so special. Now some of these will be procedures, like for example today's clip's going to be how do you bind the controller to the drone. Other times I'll give you tips and tricks of how to fly it, maybe some secret features that haven't been talked about out there yet, or even how to do basic things like a firmware update because the Mini 2 has fast become the most popular drone that DJI has released, and I think it's in part due to the fact that they've packed so much technology into this tiny little package that it's really the perfect first drone for new flyers that are looking to enter the hobby, or even as a second drone for more experienced pilots that have a lot of other drones in their fleet. But either way, we get a ton of questions on the Mini 2, and I don't mind answering them. I love talking to people on the phone and sending emails back and trying to sort out your problems, but I thought, we're getting so many questions on the Mini 2 about how do I do this, and hey, I forgot how to do that, that I thought, let me put a series of clips together and that way you guys will have a reference because we all get old we all forget stuff and over time if you forget how to do something as simple as a compass calibration you can come back here and look at the clip and and bang it out in a couple of minutes so anyway today i'm going to show you how to bind the controller to the drone because the binding between the controller and the drone should happen from the factory so when you first open up the box the controller knows the Mini 2, they're bound from birth at the factory, and you should be able to just take it out of the box, charge up the batteries, register your drone, and put this thing up in the air and have a lot of fun flying. Now occasionally, that relationship will break, because the relationship between the controller and the drone is technically a monogamous one. In other words, once they bind together, they stay together for life. But a couple of things can happen where that relationship can break up. For example, this new Generation 2 controller not only works on the Mini 2, it also works on the Air 2 and the Air 2S. So if you're flying either of those drones, you can take one controller with you, go out in the field, and when you bring up the DJI Fly app, it'll ask you, Rick, what are you flying, the Mini 2, the Air 2, or the Air 2S? And you can select that drone. The problem is you still have to bind the controller to the drone. And I know a lot of people out there complain about that and they don't understand it, but the problem is the software inside the controller will adjust the profile for whatever drone you want to bind to, but that relationship between the two is really pretty special and has to be instigated every time. Now, maybe that's something they're going to figure out later on, but the basic binding procedure between the controller and the drone really is a delicate technological dance where the controller is looking for the drone. It's also, at the same time, sniffing all the Wi-Fi bands that are out there in the 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz frequencies, and it's looking across those bands for the best possible signal to sort of send to the drone so they can keep tight communication while the drone is flying. And the controller's not only looking for that frequency, but it's also looking at the other frequencies that are available. So it's got a primary and it's got a couple of backups. And it's gonna frequency hop between those different frequencies to always keep that connection tight between the drone and the controller. So when you boot them up and you start that binding procedure, the drone is saying, hey, I'm out here, where's the controller? Who's gonna to talk to me? And the controller's busy looking at all the frequencies to find the one that's the strongest. And it's also looking for the drone going, hold on a second, I'm gonna pick a frequency. And when I find that frequency, I'm gonna to connect to you. We're gonna bind over that frequency and forevermore we'll connect over that frequency. Now, once they're flying, the controller is still constantly looking at signal strength on that particular band that they're locked in on and if it gets weak or there's interference that comes up from some other drone flying in the area or Wi-Fi interference or somebody spins up a microwave or there's a lot of Bluetooth stuff in the way this controller will then say all right look that frequency is getting a little sketchy this other frequency is pretty strong let's switch to that one it lets the drone know that and the drone and the controller will switch to that new frequency but that binding that sort of pairing and that, that monogamous relationship between the two is really, really important. And again, that happens when you power them both up. So there's two ways you can do that. The first way you can do it is through the software, and I'll show you that first. But then there's a trick where you can actually do it without the software just by tack, tapping a couple of keys on the controller, and I'll show that secondarily. But primarily what you're doing is pairing these guys up, and again, once you do that process, you should be fine for the life of the drone. The only time that might be an issue is, again, if you try to fly a different drone with it, or sometimes when you do a firmware update to the drone, you have to repair them after that. But this can be a pain if you forget how to do it, because more than once, I've ended up out in the field where somehow the pairing got broke, and I had to think about it a minute and go, all right, I know how to do this. <laughs> Let me fire up the software and get these two guys paired. But the whole thing takes like 15 seconds to get it done. It's a really simple procedure. And once you see how it's done, uh, you'll remember it forever so you'll be in good shape so stay tuned and I'll show you the software pairing first and then I'll come back and show you how to do it through the hardware 
To start the pairing process, power up the drone and power up the controller. Open up the application and on the main screen, in the upper right hand corner, you'll find three dots. Tap those. That'll bring you up to the main menu. You'll tap control at the top, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll find a repair aircraft link there on the bottom. Now before you tap that, flip the drone over, hold down the power button for four or five seconds, and you'll hear it beep once. And if you look at the LEDs, you'll find them strobing across from the left to the right. Now you're ready to start the pairing process through the application. Tap connect to aircraft, and that puts it in pairing mode. Now the controller's looking for the drone. What did that take, five seconds? It now found the drone and it's ready to fly. Now that you know how to bind the two using the software, I'll show you an even quicker way to do it using nothing but the hardware. And for this process, you don't need the DJI Fly application, you don't need your phone, all you need is the controller and the drone. And the way you'll start this process is on the bottom of the drone, you'll do the same thing to put it in pairing mode. You'll hold the button for five seconds, and you'll hear it beep like that, and you'll know you're in pairing mode because the LEDs in the bottom are strobing across. That means it's sitting there waiting for a controller to start talking to it so it can actually bind with the controller. Now to start that pairing process on the controller, you hold the two outside buttons and the camera button at the same time for five seconds until it beeps. Hear the beep, and again, you'll see this stripe across the top, which means it's now looking for the drone. And it was just that quick, and now it's paired up. Now, you might be thinking, why would I ever do that? It's a much cleaner way to do it through the software. And I agree, that's hands down the best way to do it. But a lot of times, you'll end up in the field, maybe you forgot the cable, or your phone's not fully charged, and you're thinking, man, I just want to fly a little bit. I just want to take it out over that lake and fly a little bit. Well, you can fly the drone completely fine with the controller, without the DJI Fly application, and without connecting a phone up to it. And a lot of times, that's fun to do it. Now, I'm not saying you should fly it 5,000 feet away, because you can't really tell where it is, and it's really difficult to get it back. But if you're out in the field, and all you've got is a controller and the drone, you forgot some important piece of technology to bring along with you, you can get up and fly it that way as well. So I like using that secondary procedure when I have to out in the field. Just another neat way to do it. So anyway, that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Again, these are really basic clips because we get a lot of questions about all these different procedures. And I thought, let me sit down, let me get a cup of coffee and, and explain exactly how to do these different things. Now, I promise you, I've got a ton more clips we're working on, on how to change the propellers, how to do the compass calibration, what all the software tools mean inside. I've got a couple of tips and tricks on how you can do some pretty magical things with this drone, and they're all going to be in that series, and I'm going to try and get these done over the next couple of weeks. So if there's a topic you'd like me to cover in this series, send me an email or drop it down in the comments below. I'm sure I'll add it to the list and we'll get through it. And really, my intention here is that I want to make this fun. I want to make it safe. And a lot of people are flying this drone, and I love flying this drone. So anything I can do to help other pilots enjoy this product more, I'm all about it. So we'll start with the Mini 2. If this series is popular and you guys are enjoying it, I can do the same thing for the Air 2S. I can do the same thing for the Mavic 2. You know, whatever you guys need, we're happy to do here on the channel. But this is such a popular drone that I have to pay attention to the questions coming in on this one right now because our mailbox has been flooded with inbox messages from people and comments on the channel. So anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the Drone Valley channel, hit that subscribe button down there. What are you waiting for? We have so much cool content that I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks, in addition to the Mini 2 stuff, around other technology that's just as exciting that you'll definitely want to join the family and enjoy those clips. Oh, if you need accessories too, we've got a ton of accessories for the Mini 2, the Mavic Air 2S, all the DJI drones, even the Evo and the Anafi drones, if you want to buy some accessories for those, hit our website. There's a link below for that as well. Anyway, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, happy flying. Thank you.